November 3rd. Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible. Ezekiel chapters 21 and 22 from the Old Testament. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, turn toward Jerusalem and speak out against the sanctuaries. Prophesy against the land of Israel and say to them, This is what the Lord says. Look, I am against you. I will draw my sword from its sheath and cut off from you both the righteous and the wicked. Because I will cut off from you both the righteous and the wicked, my sword will go out from its sheath against everyone from the south to the north. Then everyone will know that I am the Lord who drew my sword from its sheath. It will not be sheathed again. And you, son of man, groan with an aching heart and bitterness, groan before their eyes. When they ask you, why are you groaning? You will reply, because of the report that has come, every heart will melt with fear and every hand will be limp. Everyone will faint and every knee will be wet with urine. Pay attention, it is coming and it will happen, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy and say, this is what the Lord says. A sword, a sword is sharpened and also polished. It is sharpened for slaughter and is polished to flash like lightning. Should we rejoice in the scepter of my son? No, the sword despises every tree. He gave it to be polished, to be grasped in the hand. The sword is sharpened, it is polished, giving it into the hand of the executioner. Cry out and moan, son of man, for it is wielded against my people, against all the princes of Israel. They are delivered up to the sword, along with my people. Therefore strike your thigh, for testing will come, and what will happen when the scepter, which the sword despises, is no more, declares the sovereign Lord. And you, son of man, prophesy and clap your hands together. Let the sword strike twice, even three times. It is a sword for slaughter, a sword for the great slaughter surrounding them. So hearts melt with fear and many stumble. At all their gates I have stationed the sword for slaughter. Ah, it is made to flash, it is drawn for slaughter. Cut sharply on the right, swing to the left, wherever your edge is appointed to strike. I too will clap my hands together. I will exhaust my rage, I the Lord have spoken. The word of the Lord came to me. You, son of man, mark out two routes for the king of Babylon's sword to take. Both of them will originate in a single land. Make a signpost and put it at the beginning of the road leading to the city. Mark out the routes for the sword to take, Rabbah of the Ammonites, and Judah with Jerusalem in it. For the king of Babylon stands at the fork in the road at the head of the two routes. He looks for omens. He shakes arrows, he consults idols, he examines animal livers. Into his right hand comes the portent for Jerusalem, to set up battering rams, to give the signal for slaughter, to shout out the battle cry, to set up battering rams against the gates, to erect a siege ramp, to build a siege wall. But those in Jerusalem will view it as a false omen. They have sworn solemn oaths, but the king of Babylon will accuse them of violations in order to seize them. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Because you have brought up your own guilt by uncovering your transgressions and revealing your sins through all your actions. For this reason, you will be taken by force. As for you, profane and wicked prince of Israel, whose day has come, the time of final punishment. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Tear off the turban, take off the crown. Things must change. Exalt the lowly, bring down the proud. A total ruin I will make it, it will come to an end, when the one arrives to whom I have assigned judgment. As for you, son of man, prophesy and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says concerning the Ammonites and their coming humiliation. Say a sword, a sword drawn for slaughter, polished to consume to flash like lightning while seeing false visions for you and reading lion omens for you to place that sword on the necks of the profane wicked whose day has come the time of final punishment return it to its sheath in the place where you were created in your native land i will judge you i will pour out my anger on you the fire of my fury i will blow on you 
I will hand you over to brutal men who are skilled in destruction. You will become fuel for the fire. Your blood will stain the middle of the land. You will no longer be remembered, for I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord came to me. As for you, son of man, are you willing to pronounce judgment? Are you willing to pronounce judgment on the blood city? Then confront her with all her abominable deeds. Then say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. O city who spills blood within herself, which brings on her doom and who makes herself idols, which results in impurity. You are guilty because of the blood you shed and defiled by the idols you made. You have hastened the day of your doom. The end of your years has come. Therefore, I will make you an object of scorn to the nations, an object to be mocked by all lands. Those both near and far from you will mock you, you with your bad reputation full of turmoil. See how each of the princes of Israel living within you has used his authority to shed blood. They have treated father and mother with contempt within you. They have oppressed the foreigner among you. They have wronged the orphan and the widow within you. You have despised my holy things and desecrated my Sabbaths. Slanderous men shed blood within you. Those who live within you eat pagan sacrifices on the mountains. They commit obscene acts among you. They have sex with their father's wife within you. They violate women during their menstrual period within you. One commits an abominable act with his neighbor's wife. Another obscenely defiles his daughter-in-law. Another violates his sister, his father's daughter, within you. They take bribes within you to shed blood. You engage in usury and charge interest. You exhort money from your neighbors. You have forgotten me, declares the Sovereign Lord. See, I strike my hands together at the dishonest profit you have made and at the bloodshed they have done among you. Can your heart endure? Or can your hands be strong when I deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. I will scatter you among the nations and disperse you among various countries. I will remove your impurity from you. You will be profaned within yourself in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the house of Israel has become slag to me. All of them are like bronze, tin, iron, and lead in the furnace. They are the worthless slag of silver. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, because all of you have become slag. Look out, I'm about to gather you in the middle of Jerusalem. As silver, bronze, iron, lead, and tin are gathered in a furnace so that the fire can melt them, so I will gather you in my anger and in my rage. I will deposit you there and melt you. I will gather you and blow on you with the fire of my fury and you will be melted in it. As silver is melted in a furnace, so you will be melted in it and you will know that I, the Lord, have poured out my anger on you. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to her, You are a land that receives no rain or showers in the day of my anger. Her princes within her are like a roaring lion tearing its prey. They have devoured lives. They take away riches and valuable things. They have made many women widows within it. Her priests abuse my law and have desecrated my holy things. They do not distinguish between the holy and the profane or recognize any distinction between the unclean and the clean. They ignore my Sabbaths and I am profaned in their midst. Her officials are like wolves in her midst, rendering their prey, shedding blood and destroying lives so they can get dishonest profit. Her prophets coat their message with whitewash. They see false visions and announce lying omens for them, saying, This is what the Sovereign Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced extortion and committed robbery. They have wronged the poor and needy. They have oppressed the foreigner who lives among them and denied them justice. I looked for a man from among them who would repair the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found no one. So I have poured my anger on them and destroyed them with the fire of my fury. I hereby repay them for what they have done, declares the Sovereign Lord.
God, since <clears throat> I'm choking to death. God, since Ezekiel is talking about dross in this particular uh, couple chapters in his book, I looked up a little bit more about it. And I'd actually been a little bit familiar with dross and slag because uh, I've worked in jewelry making before. And so you're a little bit familiar with those terms. Uh, but it was interesting to me to read up more about, you know, where the word came from and, and what does it mean in, in a chemical process. And the word actually, uh, the basis of the word uh, comes from the word dross, D-R-O-S, and it means scum produced when smelting metals. And it goes on to talk about how dross is waste material it's considered rubbish and it's something that they want to get rid of now i know that you talk about this process a lot in the bible of of refining us so that the purity of who we are of who you actually made us to be continues to rise to the top that that all of the that impurities and and desire to sin and, and our bad choices in life and everything we choose that isn't of you, God, uh, are all things that you work with us uh, to get rid of. So here's what's a little bit scary. Uh, and you talk about this also in the Bible is the dross in our lives is all of the stuff that the devil gets to use for his benefit. He doesn't want us to get rid of it. This is all his fodder uh, for what he uses. Um, our choice of contentment, our choice of being comfortable, uh, our choice of leisure, our choice of, of wealth, even, even the wealth in the United States means something completely different than in the rest of the world. Um, our desire for certain relationships, our desire for labels, our desire for brand names, those are, those are all things that you would consider dross. They're all things that don't need to be part of us. They're scum. They're rubbish. They're things uh, that are impurities in us. Except the devil gets really excited about those things. Um, those are all things that he can use to distract us from our true intention here on earth. Uh, that if we are Christian, it doesn't mean that we are immune to his powers, which is a little bit scary to think about. And so he uses all of those impurities uh, to distract us, to remove us from your plan for us uh, in this world. That's pretty scary. That's scary that all of the worldly things that I still have in my life, all those sins that I choose, um, situations and habits I continually go back to, those are all being used by the devil for bad. But as I started thinking about it more and researching more about uh, dross, one of the things I found out about it is <laughs> sometimes uh, part of that dross product is not entirely waste, that they have learned how to um, recycle some of, some of it for secondary use. And I thought about, you know, I was still on this, how, how the devil uses us and all of the bad stuff to keep us from what we're supposed to be doing. But then I thought, more importantly, the God that I serve, the sovereign Lord, the God who is in control of everyone and everything in this entire world, he uses all the bad things in me. He uses them all for his good. And God, I just hold tight to that promise, not because I want to keep all the impurities in my life, not in the slightest, but at least I know that my supreme father in heaven is using all my imperfections, all my bad choices, all of the stupid things I do, that you are still using those to further your kingdom. You're still using them for the people who need to see certain things. You're still using them for your glory. I can't tell you how amazing it is to be able to use um, some of my stories from my past, stupid, sinful things I have done and help other people in their walk, in their journey, in that exact same situation. And I know that that's all you, that the dross I had in my life that was so bad and such a bad choice, that that choice you're now making good. You're now basically recycling my dross 
all of the bad stuff that I chose and continue to choose to do in this world and you're using it for good you're using it to bring people uh, to faith you're using it to bring people to grow deeper in the relationship with you God I I just think it's so amazing but there's nothing of me that goes to waste there's a lot of stuff that needs to be perfected and I I I am truly thankful and blessed that you continue to help me be a better person for you and for your kingdom. But I just think it's amazing that everything that I am right now, everything I was 10 years ago or 20 years ago, all of those things, good and bad, you choose to use for your kingdom all for good. And to me, that's absolutely amazing. And one of the best forms of recycling I've ever, ever heard of. God, work on us. Help us not only identify what the dross is in our life, but help us figure out how to remove it. And we do realize that sometimes that has to be done under very, very high pressure. Um, but we also know that you're with us through the whole thing. Not only holding us and supporting us and providing strength as those impurities, that rubbish, uh, that scum is removed from our life. But we also know that you're there afterwards, helping us come out of those situations, providing us support and encouraging us, most of all, with this amazing grace-filled forgiveness for those bad choices in the first place. I love you so much, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.